They've collared deer, bobcats, coyotes, wolves, and bears. And they put a satellite collar on. So it took a, a reading every few hours. So they could find out who's walking next to who and so forth. The study is uh, incredibly scientific and well put together. Um, they, they caught all these different animals and the, the uh, does that were caught were scanned with an ultrasound and the ones that they found out that were pregnant, they put a pit tag in it. Uh, which means that when the fawns are born, the tag goes off and the researchers then walk in and find the fawn. Right away, they put the collars on the fawn. So here's the doe, here's the fawn, with an expandable collar, and they got 111 deer, 23 bears, 3 bobcats, 11 coyotes, and 3 wolves. And one thing I always say, always check the sources, <coughs> uh, question all uh, research, and, and get involved. This is, obviously, the ratio is a little different, it's only 3 wolves, only 3 bobcats, so understand when I give you numbers, there's a few, a few other animals uh, missing here, not quite equal. Oops, the results are, who do you think of all those predators was the number one predator of adult does? Raise your hand. Nope. Coyotes. Coyotes were the number one predator of adult does. This is out of, the statistics are uh, right here. Coyotes killed six, wolves killed three. Two, uh, two of them drowned, two were killed by black bears. Uh, and that, and uh, vehicle killed one, birthing complication, 16 uh, died. So who would you think was the predator of fawn? Coyotes. Coyotes were the number one uh, predator of those and uh, Fawns. The second one was bobcats. There's only three bobcats followed. Then it was bears, then it was wolves. So this is only a, a three-year study, but it's a very well put together study. And Wisconsin's mimicking it and looking for volunteers. So if you want to be part of this study, uh, helping find fawns and attract yourself, uh, you can get some information from the out. In the, in the grand scheme of things, hunters take more deer than anything, and uh, winter stress is uh, also the next biggest problem. But bears, coyotes are by far more of a, a predator taking deer off the landscape than wolves. But yet, we there's my, my all my information here. Anti wolf. We we love our bears. So uh, lastly, why wolves? Why wolves? In Yellowstone, they did some studies of pre-wolves and post-wolves, and they found that once wolves came back, the cutthroat trout returned to the streams. Uh, the moose came back stronger. Uh, Waterfall and ducks came back. Songbirds came back. Small mammals, beavers, muskrats came back. Insects and amphibians came back. The wolves uh, forced the elk to not browse in one place along the stream bed so much. They had to move around more. And by doing that, the stream started to grow shrubs and willows again. And all this other life came back. A balance of nature. So in Wisconsin, we have diseases like uh, uh, the uh, chronic wasting disease in our deer. Wolves help moderate some of that. They also provide food for other animals. We have one of the highest deer densities in the state, uh, or in all of the United States, uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, just like we're restoring the wolfing crane, I believe it's also just as important to restore wolves back to Wisconsin. It's a picture of the wolfing crane and a wolf. And I'll end with the uh, a David Beach quote that says, The wolf is neither man's competitor nor his enemy. He is a fellow creature 
which rules the earth must be shared. And I think, as, as a naturalist, as a hunter, to me it, it's awesome to have a sense of wildness back in Wisconsin. And those wolves did it for me. I, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I'd be happy to answer a few. But again, thank you for coming today. And uh, have a great week.